Hey! Whoa, can you hear me? I don't want this too close. It's kind of obnoxious if it's too close, but I know I know you can hear me better. We got levels. Hello. Hello. Voiceover. Voiceover, boys. Hello. You're flying high on the wings of Y105. Um, yeah, so this is the first um, video for the backstage channel. And the purpose, and you hear, the, that's the cat. He thinks I'm talking to him because we spent a lot of time alone at the house together. So who would else would I be talking to? He doesn't understand this technology. Not yet. And if he does, that would be, that would be crazy. Anyway. Um, yeah. So here I'll just post what's going on for people who want to know that if you don't want to know that, or you don't care, there's no reason to be here. Um, so, and I'm grabbing this. So that's, I guess the first thing, right? The first thing to know about me is I change you nicotine. Some of you patrons know this. I'm sorry if I'm repeating it. I change you nicotine all day long, 10, 20 pieces a day. And um, I never smoked. I, I, I never smoked cigarettes. So, you know, people will see me pop in the nicotine. They're like, are you, you know, are you trying to quit smoking? It's like, no, I never smoked. I just, um, nicotine is a, it's the drug that knows. It just, it just knows. Like if you're, if you, if you're kind of low energy or kind of down, it perks you up. If you're um, wired, it settles you down. It evens you out. It just, it just knows. And being so addicted to nicotine, I'm fondling the package now. And I, you know, and I can't chew this. That would be unprofessional, right? To just do the live stream like this. Hey, so I'm gonna do these as spontaneous lives. Just it just seems like a fun thing to do. It's also then I don't have to edit it. But then you got to listen to me ramble. So um, Outlawed Thoughts is on the first ever backstage live stream and saying nice things. So that that's great. Um, hey, Outlawed, thanks for stopping by. So what is going on? If you've been with the channel for a long time, thank you for that. You notice in the last few months, things are, things are different around here. And um, different, mostly good. Channel's just over two years old. And yeah, I started it in October 2020, I think was the first video. And it was rough. It was a rough video. And um, I started the channel pretty much because I saw people seeing success with YouTube, not necessarily financial success, but having a, a good YouTube channel and going on to do other things. Um, I'm an old school TV guy or an old school entertainment guy. My background is in television and radio. So folks like us on the traditional industry would look at influencers, quote unquote, and be jealous of them. Now, I'm admitting that we're jealous. The professionals, you know, working at the networks don't admit that they're jealous, but they are because good influencers get more viewers than uh, than traditional media does. And I think that's good. Oh, more people popping in. So I got to say hello to them. Excuse me just a minute. Daniel Frost is here. I appreciate that. Jessica Wright, rambling is fine with me. I'm glad Then you're in the right place. Um, you know what? I think I could put these up, can't I? Oh, there we go. Paul Rohrbach, 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 Rohrbau, Rohrbau. No super chat? Well, I'll have to say thanks with words instead of money. Yeah, there's no super chat on this because the channel's not large enough to be monetized. And I think that's fine. I think that's cool. Um, Apache Wolf, best channel on YouTube. I appreciate that. Jessica Wright, not that old. Well, 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 it's a matter of perspective. Yeah, the channel's not big enough to be monetized. So don't worry about the super chats. If you want to support the Y files, there's a lot of ways to do that. And, uh, I'm not going to do plugs here. You'll you'll figure it out. Um, so where was I? Traditional media, jealous of influencers, right? So uh, my wife and I and my brother, our businesses are always the three of us, the triumvirate, the, the triarchy. We owned a small studio in LA. Not that small. I mean, nice studio in LA on, uh, on Sunset Boulevard, kind of the dream studio. And we had, um, our clients were mostly comedy people, comedy podcasts. We were involved heavily with the Joe Rogan crowd. So we would host um, Josh Wolf, Kurt Metzger, Emmy Award winner. Um, Kill Tony was broadcast there a lot during the pandemic and a lot of shows like that. And at some point I'll link to them or put them here so you can see if you're curious. 
So what happened was the pandemic hit LA really hard and, uh, and we, no one would really come into the studio anymore. Even though we stayed open, even though we weren't allowed to officially be open, we stayed open. Um, sort of took our political stand and it didn't matter. We could take our stand all we want. Our clients weren't coming in. Now, the studio wasn't making money before that, very little. So after this, it was zero. So we didn't really know what to do um, because we were spending a ton of money on overhead, but weren't bringing anything in. And I always had in the back of my mind to start a YouTube channel. And the channel I wanted to start was mostly like science, science, technology, that kind of thing. Um, you know, think, think Joe Scott but with a lot less electronic solar power, Elon Musk stuff, just, you know, things like that. If you watch the first couple of videos, you could see what I was going for pretty much straight science, weird science, but keeping it kind of straight down the middle. But I did always want to mix in the weird stuff because those are the stories that also interest me. And as the channel went along, the weird stories got much more traction. So that's why we shifted to mostly that. And hopefully later we'll go back to straight science, maybe ideally straight science, fun science on Mondays, and then the weird stories on, on Thursdays. That's what I'd like to do. So, but in the early days, that's that's kind of what I wanted to do. That's that's the channel I wanted to start. And um, in my hubris, in my arrogance as a professional, as a professional, television, radio, voiceover professional, I've been a producer, a writer, and all kinds of stuff that you guys have seen. I figured, okay, a successful YouTube channel, you need writing, you need editing, you need a host, um, you need a production value, that stuff. It's like, well, I know how to do all those things. I've done all of those things professionally for networks. So I can do that. So, of course, I would start the channel. And within, I don't know, three or four hours, I would have thousands of subscribers. Not, I wasn't that arrogant. But I figured the channel would grow very quickly. People would latch on immediately and say, oh, this is a very professional. This is a fun channel. I'm in. That's what I figured would happen. And uh, that didn't happen. It, it grew very slowly, at least from my perspective, for... A year, it took a, I think it took about a year to maybe get to 7,000 subscribers. And really the subscribers, that's a vanity number. If you don't know, subscribers are a vanity number. It looks, you get a plaque on the wall. It looks good on your channel, but what you really want are views. So that meant it was even worse because I had 7,000 subscribers at the end of a year, but the videos were getting three or 400 views. So people were hitting sub, but they weren't watching. And, uh, you know, and it's disheartening. Now, I wasn't super depressed over it. I was still like, just stay the course. You'll be okay. It just, the algorithm has to find you. And um, the algorithm didn't find me. And then about, I guess, about 15, 16 months in, we finally hit like 10,000, maybe 11,000 subscribers. And we're getting a few views, like 1,500 views per video. And... Um, in the middle of that, I took a full-time job as an editor. We um, we moved from LA during the, the pandemic to Scottsdale. We moved during the, um, the protests. One of the protesters had set fire to the building next to our studio. And we spent three nights in a row sleeping in the middle of the studio with, uh, with loaded guns on the coffee table, he, listening to screaming outside and police engines. It was, it was horrible, but it still hadn't, it, it hadn't directly affected us yet. But then one night we were driving home from the studio and there are protesters, um, looting this looting all over Hollywood and Highland. And if you know LA, you know, that's where like all the stores are. It's like the, the tourist shops, high end stores are there. So we're driving through there and just like, we're s <sighs> hopefully it goes away. Oh, hang on, hang on. That's, that's Jen trying to reach me now. And she doesn't know I'm I'm on the, see, I, I was going to say I'm on the air, but I'm not really on the air. Hang on, hang on. I'm looking, I'm looking for her tab. You're not going to Walmart, need anything other than heavy cream. See how that is? And I did need, I need heavy cream for the coffee. Um, oh, you guys, if you're in the chat, you may have to remind me where I left off. 
So Cameron is one of the Wi Fiers. He uh, he made this great fan art, and if you want to make fan art, I'll put it on the Instagram. I mean, no one really follows the Wi Fiers Instagram, but uh, but I'll put it up there and I'll shout you out or link to your portfolio, your business, or whatever you want to do. But Cameron made this great art, and I thought it would look super cool in a coffee mug. What do you think? I, I hate having my face on there. And and when we started doing merch, Jen is like, oh, we'll put your face on with Hecklefish. I'm like, I'm, we're not putting my face on shirts. That's first. I don't want my, my face is not really built for shirts. Maybe when I was younger and handsomer, but now, no. Um, but I, it's obnoxious. But I figured this is a cartoon, right? So I thought that was cool. All right, so what did we need behind behind heavy cream? Did I mention did I mention it in the beginning? Um, where are you? Outlawed, Paul, Jessica. Did I mention it? I definitely need heavy cream. And um, yes, I need something else. No idea what. Ah, diet bread. Diet bread. Like six months into my get rid of the COVID pounds diet. And, uh, and I could prove it by showing you the, the videos from six months ago where there's just a fat guy hosting the channel with the, with a fish. Where is that fish? Is he there? Where are you? Ah, oh, there he is. Um, what do you think, Alcofish? Did I, I looked, I was fat, but I looked good, right? Still now hit? this is a good human right here. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, he was talking about you, Daniel Frost. I was asking, do, did I look good when I was chubby? I still looked pretty good, right? Um, let's see. How about no? All right. Yeah, he, he didn't really dig it. I didn't either. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what my normal weight is, but I got on the scale and I was 35 pounds above that. And that was a wake-up call. So it's been six months of I literally ate nothing but tuna tuna from the can or tuna salad for 60 straight days to get it started and uh, and lost 32 of the 35. So I'm back down to kind of my normal weight. All right. So the channel, right? That's where I was. I didn't hear anything else from your grocery list, Paul says. No, I think that's it. I think that's it, Paul. I know because we need the cream for the coffee and, uh, and diet bread for the PB&J. You know, peanut butter and um, sugar-free jelly and low calorie bread been eating that every day for for a couple of months but it's, but it's working um i thought i saw one from linda uh, uh or lydia hello aj please introduce us to your cat there's two of them uh a fuzzy one i call dummy he's beautiful but he's he, he knows he is, so he's obnoxious about it. You know, anyone with an attractive daughter knows that. So he's dummy, and then the other one's Bean. And you'll probably hear dummy walk around here because he thinks I'm talking to him. Bean, you won't hear. He, he stays hidden. Um, but if they show up, I'll, you know, I'll grab them and throw them up here. But I'm trying to make this point about the channel. 1450 months in, right? Is that where we were? Earl Oaks, more tuna. No, that's that. No, we're not there. Uh, just right. You're talking about driving down a road, drive down to LA. All right. And then I'll get back to the channel, driving down, heading home from the studio in LA. And then the protesters, the protesters had, had baseball bats and started chasing our car down the street. So I am now in a big Ford F-150 tearing ass backwards down Hollywood Boulevard, escaping the protesters that want to protest us with their baseball bats. So, um, so we got home and that was terrifying. And we decided that night we're out, we're out of LA. We told, uh, we were at a rental. We told our landlord we're done and we headed to Scottsdale. We were there for about a year and now we're in North Texas and we're moving again. That's something I, maybe I won't get into it now because I don't want the video to be nightmarishly long. We're 14 minutes in, um, but we're moving to Vegas and, uh, and there's some cool announcements with that because I'm going out ahead of time and we got a small studio, like kind of like we did in LA, although for one tenth the price, uh, it's going to be the Wi-Fi studio. So, uh, so I'll be live streaming about that. Um, hide that comment. So that's why we left LA. So the channel, 15 months in, it's 10, 12,000 subscribers. I take a full-time job in, 
in Scottsdale and which makes me post less frequent videos because I'm busy working. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of depressing about the channel was languishing. It was good to have a steady paycheck for a change. I hadn't had one of those in years. And, um, and then Jen got a great job in, uh, in just we're, we're in Plano. She got a job here in kind of like outside of Dallas for a company called Explosum Entertainment, which a lot of you guys might know as Cyanide and Happiness. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, cyanide and yeah, I mean, you might might recognize i think we stuff. should explore a few solutions grammarly suggestions catch when you're you guys know this <laughs> i really kill him <laughs> yeah so sorry uh, i know you know oh, quiet i need you to settle um so she got this great job as the coo of explosum so we moved. My, I, I, I kind of loved my job. My job was fine. I was an editor and a producer, but the people there were great. I didn't really want to leave, but I was making very, very little money. And, um, and Jen would be making a lot of money. So, you, you know, she's bringing home the bacon. We got to follow the bacon. So we set up to move. Fortunately, I was able to work remotely for my former company for a while, for over a year I did. And at the same time, kind of got the channel going again because I was working remotely. And look, be honest, people who work from home are just not working as hard. I know that's controversial to say, but I've been a business owner and an employee, and I'm telling you it's true. All right, let's see what Jen's back. Let's see. What do you need? Di I said diet bread. I told her diet bread. Okay, exclamation points. All right. One day we'll do a video about exclamation points because I have thoughts. So the channel started to pick up a little bit again because I was able to do a little bit more with it. Um, still nothing gangbusters, but I was able to kind of go every week, which really helped. And I think that got us to about 14, 15,000 subscribers. If you're keeping track of the numbers, we're getting like 15 or 20 a day. That's That was what, what it was. 40 would be a great day. Um, and still 15,000 subscribers, 1,000 views. So nobody's watching. And then my brother tells me, my brother Gino says, hey, you got to go on TikTok. And I, I, I don't want to go on TikTok. I've looked at TikTok. It's fine. It's a lot of, you know, it seems like it's young girls in bikinis and, and you know, cat videos. And I, I'll watch both of those, but, I, you know, I'm not going to download the, the, the Chinese communist app on my phone for bikinis and cat videos. I can get that. I can get that at home. I just, you know, if I'm just nice enough to ask for it. Um, so I didn't want to do TikTok, but the channel hit like it, it, it wasn't a plateau. It hit like a, uh, like a downhill boom and I needed to do something. So, um, I said, F it. I made a, I made a couple of shorts that maybe you've seen the coincidences between Lincoln and JFK, which I always thought were fun. And, um, and a couple of others threw those on TikTok and they went bananas got millions of views on there within a couple of days. And it, the Y files TikTok account went to like 50,000 followers in two or three days. So I was like, ah, he's onto something. Uh, let's just quickly say hello. Cause Michelle made it to one Michelle. This isn't, this is like the secret backstage video. This isn't, this is, this is just, well, this is just for us. I'm glad you made it. That must mean you're a subscriber. Cause no one else would know to come here. And this is the first one. You made it to the first one. I'll I'll say to hi, Brett. Everybody, in a second when I fin when I finish the kind of bringing us current. So TikTok went bananas. A million views, two million views, three million views. Well, no one's still no one's watching the Y files on YouTube, and TikTok's great. I got into the monetization program or whatever it is. I never made any money, um, and then something happened where one of my videos got flagged for misinformation or some, some, something. It might've even been the JFK video because I, I don't know what, I don't know the reason I appealed it and it went back to being alive. But then I noticed that the views were going from, I don't know, 600,000 a day to 
1500 and scanning through my content. And there was a couple of videos flagged and one that's for mature audiences. None of them were crazy. There was one short about why are so many feet washing up outside of Salish Canadians know that how to pronounce that body of water feet were washing up. They were connected to suicides and murders. I didn't use the word suicide or murder or, or use any graphic, anything in the video. It was just, it was mostly the reason why, why shoes are floating up, but that was flagged as not violent content, shocking content is what it was. I peeled that and it said no. And since then that horrible week, I think we've averaged a hundred subscribers a day on TikTok. And when I say a hundred a day, I mean losing a hundred a day. Nobody watches the TikToks anymore, just the people who are who subscribe to it, and very few of them watch. And it became, it just went away. And it was really devastating because people were finding the Y files from TikTok. So for like three or four days, maybe a few more than that. The channel went from 20 to 30 subscribers a day to like 500 or 600 a day. In a few days, suddenly it was like we're two days, 1,000 subscribers. Then we got another 700, then 500, then 600. And went on for a few days where we went from, I don't know, 15,000 to, I don't know, 20,000. I would even show you the stats if I could. I'm just not, I'm not prepared for it. And if you watched the Y Files live streams, those two, you know I'm never prepared for these. I'll show you next time if anyone cares. Um, uh, Bobby, Bobby Zerate, or I want to pronounce it as Zerati, like karate. Hi, AJ. I love these opportunities to interact and engage with one of my favorite creators. That's very nice of you to say. Feel free. I'll, I'll Q&A this when we're done if you want to stick around for it. Um, there's only 26 of, 26 of us on here. That's great because I can pay attention. The other live streams when there's 3,000 people on there, I, it's, it's chaos. I can't keep up. So... It was disappointing because TikTok made all that go away. So after working so hard for like a year and a half, we had a few days of subscribers and action and people were going back and watching the old videos. Views were up. It was like, oh, I finally broke through the algorithm, but I didn't break through. When people stopped coming from TikTok, they stopped really, the channel stopped growing and we went down, down to 30, 20, 30, 10 subscribers a day. Sometimes we'd even lose a couple. And... It was tough. It was tough. And I'm working my full-time job during this time still. Then, I don't know, about a month of that, and I'm just done with TikTok. And about a month of that, and then YouTube starts really pushing shorts hard. They, did, they, they had existed for a year, but I really didn't want to do them. Any creators that you like that do long form, none of them want to do shorts. We all hate it. Um, but YouTube really wants us to. They're really pushing us into doing it. I didn't want to do this on YouTube, but I had like 10 or 12, maybe 20 shorts that I made for TikTok that I didn't, that's, that was the only place they were. I didn't even know you could put them on Instagram at the time. You know, I don't use Instagram either. I'm trying to get better though. So I had these shorts and I figured let's throw them up on YouTube. Now I had two up there already because I did the the JFK one and maybe one other, and maybe the the feet washing up one. I did those and I put them on YouTube. And on YouTube, they got, I don't know, 100, 100 views. But on TikTok, they got millions. So I'm not looking over there. I'm looking over here. By the way, this is where TikTok is, you know, the, theoretically in, in this. I'm doing, this is theater of the mind. TikTok's there, YouTube's here. So I'm focused here. I'm not looking here because I don't care about this. But... YouTube is now pushing the shorts. So I've got this content. So I say, all right, I, I've got maybe 20 of them. So I block. Lydia, that's, that's Bean. I can't, the camera's static, so I can't. You know what I'll do for next time? I'll actually have a separate camera that I can walk around with you guys if you want to see. Um, but I've got, there's two cats here. Boys? Yeah, they're listening to me, but then I say boys, and they both put their legs up and lick their assholes at the same time. Nice. Nice. So I have these 20 shorts. I go into YouTube. I schedule them for two a week for however many weeks, eight, 10 weeks. And I just let it rip, and nothing happens. But then after a few days, maybe like after two or three shorts are up, I start to see a little uptick in action on the channel. And it was the... I think it was the JFK video 
which had been there for months. Um, but now suddenly that's getting ticked up. And then a day or two later, then it starts to really blow out where it's picking up 20,000 or 30,000 views a day and, and more. That happens and that brings in a chunk of subscribers, a thousand a day for a little while. And then I think the algorithm goes, oh, these videos might be okay. And they start promoting others and then things go bananas with the shorts on the Y files. So much so that we went from 15,000 subscribers to a hundred in something like three weeks. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. I still can't believe the numbers where we are today. Cause remember this, those three weeks, that hundred thousand subscribers that I'm telling you about, that's like three and a half months ago, four months, four and a half months ago. It's not, this is, I'm not telling you the story about, you know, the early days, this just happened. So the shorts are going bonkers. They're bringing in a lot of subscribers and they're not watching the long form videos, but a couple of them do trickle over. And I went from being able to respond to every single one of my comments, which was a point of pride for me. Like if you were here on the channel before four months ago, if you left a comment on one of my videos, I wrote back to you. I wrote back to every single person. Because if you take the time to say something nice about the channel, I'm going to write back to you. And if you take the time to say something mean about the channel, I'm going to shadow ban you. Hey, it's just the way it goes. But if you're going to say something nice, I want to acknowledge that I got that and they heard you. Um, but the comments became so difficult to deal with because people were commenting on the shorts now. And instead of get it, getting 30 or 40 comments a day, I was now getting 5,000. But they were all on the shorts and the comments on the shorts are awful. I even went on to our Discord and I maybe even posted this in the community tab. Let me, I'll put a link to our Discord so you guys have it. If you're not on the Discord, you should go, you should go hang out there because we're all there. All the, all the cool kids are there. So I told everyone, like all the fans, don't comment on the shorts. Just don't because everyone on there is like a 19-year-old bro with nothing positive to say about anything. Because some people would go on there. I even think I saw Lydia. I think I saw you commenting on a lot of shorts maybe early on. But some of the Y Files fans would go in there and like defend me and defend the content. Don't don't do that. That's feeding the trolls. Just ignore them. So very few channels, you know, everyone says like, subscribe, comment, and share. I was telling them, don't like, don't comment, don't share, don't even look at them. Don't look at the shorts, guys. That's that's for them. These are for us. And um, but it grew the channel. It got us to a hundred thousand subscribers. Still. The views on the long forms were what they were, 1,200, 1,500 views on those and ticking up a little bit, but really not that much. So then I kind of pulled the shorts back and then I made a commitment to be super consistent with long form. We're at 28 minutes. I promise I'm not going to go that much longer because we're almost current. I made a commitment to just post, like to post the long form every single week, every Thursday without fail while mixing in the shorts when I could. And that seemed to make the difference. And I say seem because the, the algorithm is a mystery black box to everybody. When I look at the stats, the stats are over here now for, for Theater of the Mind. When I look at the stats, I'll see a video from a year ago, suddenly doing great, that no one ever watched. The, like the mystery of the green children, no one ever watched that. No one watched that video when I put it out. But I changed the thumbnail. Uh, maybe that helped. And then suddenly, I don't maybe over a million views now in the past couple of months, but it's something like that. These, it just, things just happen. And you don't know why, which makes it hard to say, well, I did this. So I got rewarded, but I don't know what I did, but I do know consistency helps. And that's kind of where we have been is it's been, it's been great growth. It's been peaks and valleys, but the peaks have been higher. The peaks have been higher, like six or 7,000 subscribers a day. And the, and the valleys have been higher, which will get as low as 2,000 subscribers a day. And that's a lot. So some of the channels I follow, I mentioned Joe Scott. Joe, if you're watching this, I'm a huge fan. And I'm going to hurt your feelings now. And I'm sorry. I, I'm just using you as an example. But a great channel like Joe Scott, who's got like a million and a half subscribers, he will average maybe 1,000 or 2,000 subscribers a month, maybe three on a good month. And he's shown his stats, so I know this. 
But the last three months, the Wi-Fi House has, got, has over 100,000 subscribers each month. Channels like his will get 100,000 views a day. We get between 500 and 600,000 views a day, you know, without the shorts. So something's working. I honestly don't know what it is. This is a channel I would like to watch, and maybe there are just more weird people out there like me. Um, and like Tacklefish, that people want to see this. Um, but I, I can't believe it every day. You know, I, when, when, I don't, when I'm not looking at the stats, Jen will come in and be like, oh, you had a pretty good day today. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to jinx it because I pinch myself because I can't believe how far. I mean, we're going to hit 700,000 subscribers probably tomorrow. It's crazy. And the cool thing about it is they're all watching the videos now. So I don't know. To everyone's in the chat, there's 38 of us. Thank you guys. Cause you're just, you're the super fans. So I couldn't do this without you. That full-time job. I I've, I've been full-time on the channel now for about two months and it's amazing. Now the double-edged sword is because there's so much activity on the channel and it's getting so much attention. There's a lot of pressure to get good long form content out on time. Now, I don't know if the pressure is what I put on myself. I don't know, but I feel like when you have something successful and so many people kind of looking forward to your content, you need to deliver on that because I don't want to lose what I worked for. And, uh, and I certainly don't, I, you know, I would miss these relationships if they went away. So I, I'd like to maybe cut from 20 to 30 minute videos a week, one of those a week to maybe two 15s, but I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm going to try it. The next time I live stream, hopefully I'll do this before I leave, but we got a small studio in Las Vegas. We are moving there. I'm going in there ahead to get the studio set up. Uh, it's got a studio apartment upstairs. It's going to be, I don't know how many rats are there yet. I'll deal with that. I, I've dealt with that. I'm from New York and LA. I could deal with rats. And then Jen will come out, you know, a few weeks or a month later. And, uh, and then we're in Vegas. So I'm going to try and get a live stream going before then, just to give you more details on that. If I can, if I have the, if my phone works, I'll even live stream from the car. I'm going to be in the car for like three days or maybe two straight if I push hard. Um, maybe I'll live stream from a truck stop or something. If they have Wi-Fi, if you guys want to see that. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. This is the first, this is the first one for backstage. I hope it was fun. Um, I sound like I'm wrapping up. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to get to your comments, but if you don't want to hear me answer these questions that are in the chat, cool. Thanks for stopping by. Be safe. All that kind, you know how it finishes and I'll see you next time, but let's go through here. Let's go through here. Um, the, the one good thing about the super chats is this cool. If this is in my face, guys, just so you can hear me a little better. One cool thing about the super chats, even though they cost you money is they're, they're sort of flagged in the dashboard so I can see them. All right, so I'm going to start. Yeah, I'm going to st let me just start at the beginning. Um, and I'm just going to put everything on the screen. And if I get a question, I'll answer it. Thank you. No super chat. Yeah, we got that. Best shot. Thanks. Not at all. All right, I think we got those. Earl Hoax. Hail AJ. Thanks for that. But we mean hail in like the friendly comrade way. Not, don't, don't, no hail is like I'm better than you because I'm not. And that I got really lucky, but, um, uh, we're, we're all part of this community. We're all in this together. I couldn't do this without the community. I don't know if there's any mods on here. Probably not because I did this totally, you know, my, Jen went out, the wife is gone. I said, all right, I'll do this now. That way she doesn't have to listen to this. Um, so I don't know if the mods are here, but so much of this, so much of the, the success of the channel, but most of the community is because of the, the moderators that we have. So if you ever see them in the, in the chat, say you know, please thank them, say hi to them, and if you're not on Discord, jump on there and uh, and hang out with them. They're great folks. Um, Eric, glad to see you live. Excellent channel. Love your messages. I'm an engineer, and your approach to the content is chef's kiss. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. What about you? Agapus? That's a smart human. Yeah, he. Likes you sure that. you're not part goldfish? Uh, he may be. Um, excellent channel. Messages at the end. Okay, got that one. But you know, roasting coffee. Good. Enjoy that. Mine is a combination of French dark roast from Cafe du Monde and, and 
coffee and chicory from Cafe Du Monde. So the blue can and the orange and the yellow can. Because I like it super, I like it very muddy. Like if the spoon could stand up straight, that's how I like it. But I'm not a coffee snob. I don't like fancy coffees. Starbucks, I don't care for that. I'll take Dunkin' Donuts coffee over most anything. McDonald's coffee, I think is great. But I'm lo- one of the things I'm looking forward to in my drive across the country is, is gas station coffee. Where it just sits there all day in that pot and it's kind of all crusty. Yeah, that's what I want. Pour that right, right in my cup. You know, roll like a lion, bad like a sheep. I already sent you a lot of money, but thanks, thanks for the money, Paul. All right, uh, Earl. I'm sure a lot of us would be very interested to see a video on your take of what it's like in the big media world. Um, I'll do a separate one, but do me a favor, go in the comments and leave kind of specific specific questions. So I kind of know what you're talking about. Um, I worked most of my career at MTV on the radio side and the TV side for some shows that, you know, but I've also worked for Playboy radio, um, and in porn a little bit and at the Mustang ranch. I didn't do porn. I, I was in radio working for Playboy and, and other companies that were in the porn industry. I made radio stations for them. Um, but any of that stuff, I can tell you how radio works. Does anyone even have a radio anymore? Apache, Kill Tony's a good show. It is. And Tony's uh, Hinchliffe has been very good to us uh, over the years. Um, and if you watch Kill Tony, especially the early episodes, you'll hear those shout shout outs, shouts out, shout outs to Speedweed. That's the company that uh, Gino and my wife, Jen, and I created you know, years and years ago, which at the time was the largest medical marijuana delivery service in the world. I'm not even really a weed guy. But it was my brother's idea, but it did, it did, it did great. Until it didn't, and boy, it holy cow! I'm I still have PTSD over it. That's another video. Um, Tammy, thanks, you're appreciated too. Patrick did not receive a notification. You just stumbled on it. You no bat signal. Tammy, I'd like to start a channel, but I'm really not sure how to do it. Okay, it's easy. The best, the easiest way to start a channel is start one. So if I had to give advice, which you haven't asked before, is a lot of people will say, well, think about what your channel is going to be and then start. I wouldn't even do that. Just start because you don't know what the channel is going to be. I started this chat. My first video, I was doing card tricks and talking about math. I thought it was going to be something that maybe teachers would use with middle school students. Um, it, turned, it turned out to be something different. You don't know what you have until you do it and you put videos out there and see how people respond. So you don't need a camera. You don't need anything. You just put your phone up there. And just talk and see what it is and put it up there and then try something effort, different. The only thing I would say that you should do is just be consistent about it. Be consistent and something specifically from me, which I don't hear a lot of other creators say, is respect your community. You know, the, re, the people that follow you early and give you feedback early and especially the people that are kind to you early, be so kind to them because they will, they'll stick with you. You know, they're important. Uh, Daniel, not sure and easy. Everything has to match. Okay, so you're getting some you're getting some good suggestions here. Daniel Frost, start with being yourself. Absolutely. Merrily down the stream. Very good. Bobby's right. Yeah. Caught, <laughs> caught ya. Oh, Johnny C. Johnny C. Hecklefish, you got you got another fan. He goes, LOL, love Mr. Hecklefish. Nothing? Got nothing for him? Okay. Uh, more tuna. Talking, oh, okay. People helping me get my train of thought. Don't worry about your appearance. Worry about your health. Weight is a part of that. Yep. Lost the COVID weight. Inside the CAA or Occam's Ra- versus Occam's Razor whim or on purpose. Occam's Razor was sent to me by a, a, a viewer who wanted to like talk about it on the channel or get me to talk about the stuff that was in there, which I can't really do. I don't really do interviews on the channel, at least not yet. Uh, if you guys want to see that, I will. But what I did do for him is I put the the book in the you know it kind of in the video underneath Hecklefish's bowl, just so it was there. And a lot of the stuff you see on the bulletin board behind me, yeah, there's conspiracy stuff in there, but there's also pictures of my family and friends. But there's also pictures that you guys send in. Like if a Patreon Patreon member sends me 
something. Like if they do something nice for me, like, I don't know, make me a piece of artwork, I'll put their logo on the board. And uh, folks have been kind to the channel. So I just, I put them on the board. I know you can't really see it, but they can see it. You know, and they could point to their friends and family and say, look, there's my logo or there's my picture or whatever. There's the painting that I made. All right, excuse my, my eyes while they're down, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting to everyone. Jessica Wright, my daughter Ellie would like for you to say hey to her, please. Hey, Ellie. Oh, I don't want to be creepy. I don't want to be creepy. Hey, Ellie. Hey. Hello. Is she saying hi back? Just tell me she's saying hi back. Okay. Uh, Andre, good for you, AJ. Stick to anti-social media like YouTube. Yeah, I hear you. I'm not on social media very much. I'm really not. Uh, I used to be. I have a deep, deep tech background, which I'll get into another time. It's too, it's too much now. But uh, so I was a programmer and a coder for many, many years. So I've always been into that stuff. But it just became more toxic. You know, uh, I hate to say it, but the internet was a lot more fun when it was just us nerds on it, you know, and uh, me, I go back to the late seventies, early eighties with it, but I hardly ever use Facebook anymore. Um, I used, I use Twitter for the channel. I never really tweet. I use Twitter for the channel. I've been using Instagram a little bit more only because a lot of people are reaching out on there. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that, Ellie. I, I had, I had peanut butter and then I have the coffee. All right, let's see what Eric's got. Eric, that's very nice of you. He's offering to roast some coffee. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do the best five I will ever have, huh? You don't have to do that, but if you want to, I'll take it. We've got the uh, the mailing address, I think, is on the channel, but if it's not there, just shoot me an email, and I'll, I'll get that over to you. Barbara has always been a huge fan of factual subjects, so thanks so much. I really do hope you can and will stick with it and make a living at it, too. I appreciate that. We're almost there. I think I think Patreon's almost almost what I was making as an editor. Not qu not quite, or it's close, but no health insurance. So that's the wife still has the health insurance, but we're getting there. I'm I'm not complaining. This is I mean this is pretty this is pretty cool to be able to do this. Bobby, I never miss Randall Carlson's Kismographia. I, is that his show? Is that a live stream that? that Randall has? Cause I definitely would love to see that. Michelle found us through a YouTube short, but immediately subbed and started binge watching. And I remember, I remember your, your great comments all the way from the beginning. Girls are proud. Super fan. Hey, we're up to 40 people in here. Black cat with white feet walked away. And look, I have a camera that I can hook up and make it work. I, I just don't want you guys to be sitting there while I'm tinkering, but I'll, I'll do it for next time. Give some magic time. Just got back from Vegas. That's too bad. We could have hooked up. I'm going to be there without a wife for like weeks. Bobby, do you need researchers? Always do. Always do. You can email me about that. We need researchers and writers. Email me about it. Don't get angry when I don't email you right back about it. I'll email you back and say, I got it. And then I'm, I put you in a folder. And then when Vegas gets launched and the studio set up, then we'll start bringing on people to help with the research. It also needs to get balanced with what the channel's making. I'm sorry, sweet boy, with what the channel's doing because I need to have enough to pay you guys. No one works for free, even if it's not much. No. Even if not much, no one works for free. Ugh. Say hi to your friends. What about this? That's dummy. Go ahead, sweet boy. All right. He's not going to go down. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot a lot of the day is spent like this. All right, let me see what I can say. Uh, <laughs> South Carolina has a Bigfoot festival. Well, go and take some video or some pictures. 
I, I'm not a cryptids guy, but after last, uh, the wolf man, the werewolf, the dog man one, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a believer. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, God knows who, uh, LOL Hecklefish. LOL, he LOL Hecklefish. Eh, pretty smart for a human. Yeah, there he is. Grab a couple of gas station hot dogs to go with your coffee. That might be where I draw the line. Gas station hot, 7 Eleven hot, hot dog. Oh, I just had a, I had a bad experience with those and a bad experience with a 7 Eleven hot dog. That's that was a long afternoon, but I'm super excited that there's a Nathan's in Vegas. There has been one there forever. I think there's a couple, but I know for sure that in New York, New York, um, I know a lot of I've been to Vegas a zillion times in New York, New York, they have that up that's like second floor food court with all the New York themed restaurants. And there's like a Sabaro pizza up there. New Yorkers don't eat that, but you can get hot pretzels up there. And New Yorkers that live in New York would never eat the hot pretzels. I'll tell you why, if you ask. Um, but we do eat Nathan's hot dogs. So those are up there and are the fries might be the best fries. That, that'd that be a challenge. If, if Are there better fries? What, what place has the best fries? I say Nathan's. And as I get to the bottom of this, I see we're almost done. A question for you for this live stream, and we're at 46 minutes. There are online games that we can play, you know, with small groups like this. Trivia games, just fun, nonsense kind of stuff. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. You know, we'll, can, we can do a Q&A. We can get an update. But if you just want to goof around with the few of us that are in here, it could be fun. Scrolling. Ellie is squealing with delight. Well, tell her that she's my favorite little piglet. Um, informal conversation is better than formal interviews. No planning, rather with. I agree. Rather than interview, um, I'd like to have maybe just a couple of just talking points, you know, in, info points, and then just have a conversation, kind of like a like you would do on a podcast, you know, kind of like a Joe Rogan style thing. I started programming on. Holler, hollerinth cards, that's that's way before my time if you're programming on cards. Um, my first language was basic on the VIC-20, and then in school we did Pascal and COBOL. Um, I don't do much programming anymore, but I did up until just a couple of years ago. It was mostly Python, C, and PHP. If I mean, if you care. If you're a nerd, you know what those things are. I still build my own servers, though. I mean, the, the Wi Files web server is that's sitting on CentOS 7 that I built myself. He is beautiful and well fed. Oh, he, he's well fed. I mean, it's easy to feed him well when he jumps on the table while you're eating and puts his face in your bowl. And they're spoiled, but my, my first cat that was like mine alone, that was Buddy. And he just, he just passed away, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. I had him for years. He was so well trained. Like he wouldn't jump on stuff because I trained him since he was a baby boy. You know, he he was loud in my lap and that was about it. He wouldn't jump up. But then we got another cat. And then I got married and got another cat. And then we got another, and we had four cats at one point. And then by that point, and if you have kids, you know this. I've I've just got the one. If you have multiple kids, you know that with each one, you just get less, it's just less and less energy. So by the time the the fourth cat, he's the youngest, came around. It's like, he just does whatever he wants. I just work around. You see, he walks, just asshole in my face. I just have to talk around his asshole. I'm sorry, Ellie. Um, I meant butthole. Rectum. Anus. Sphincter. Uh, gosh, I missed you, yet I've spent the last few hours watching other videos. That's, that's very nice of you to say. I mean, that. I'm so happy that you guys are getting something out of them. You know, I can't believe anyone <laughs> anyone watches these crazy videos. How do you even describe the channel to somebody? Well, he talks about conspiracies for a while, but then he doesn't. Then it kind of ruins them. Oh, and there's a there's a talking fish. What? People watch that? Some. Oh, hang on a second. Paul, I don't have your email address, but I would send you a message on Patreon about something. My email address is aj at the yfiles.com. Michelle, the Wi-Files, do you voice Hecklefish? 
No, he vo- he voices himself. I mean, who does your voice? Oh, that's gonna be a hard no. See, he does he does his own voice. Buddy, she wants to know who voices you. Um, can we get a translation for this? Yeah, he doesn't know what you're talking about. All right, let's play some games. Cool. Uh, what else we got? You host your own service, so cool. I haven't done it in years. Do the bandwidth issues. What sort of connection do you have? I mean, it's co-located. I mean, it's 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 through Google Cloud, and you set up. I didn't set up a metal server. I set up an instance, and you can kind of put whatever you want on there. So I just put sent o, vanilla sent OS, and then I build everything from scratch. I know you can get all the software built together if you want to do a lamp stack or something, but I started out in tech in you know, as a professional in the mid nineties, and we always built everything from scratch. So I still get the, just the vanilla server. And then if I'm putting Apache on there or whatever, um, I compile it from source. Uh, so sorry for my loss. Thank you. That's very nice. It was a, it was a tough day because four cats, we only have two. We lost pretty girl in a violent way. We were living in the Hollywood Hills and they were outdoor cats, which was a bad idea. I know that, but my buddy was always an outdoor cat and it was fine. So they were four outdoor cats and our neighbors would say, you don't want your cats outdoors here. The Hollywood Hills had a lot of, we had bobcats and we had coyotes. So she was missing for about a week and I'm just walking up and down the neighborhood, just yelling her name like a crazy person all night long for hours, just calling for her. And finally, Jen was, we're in bed and Jen's on like the next door app where neighbors are one of those. And we're just looking around and someone says, look, I found this cat. And she's like, oh my God, someone found her. And I was like, really? She said, and she's like shaking her head. And she just showed me one of the pictures. She wouldn't show me the other ones, but it was basically half of her. So some animal had gotten to her and, uh, and she was young. She was young. So that was a hard loss. And then I was thinking, all right, no more outdoor cats. That's it. But then some, I got distracted or whatever. And then about three weeks later, Buddy, who's my boy. I mean, but I'll tell this last story and then that'll be it. I never wanted cats. It wasn't a, really a cat guy. I had dogs. And um, I was going to work one day uh, at Playboy. And I stop off to get coffee or whatever, breakfast. And I'm walking back to my car and I hear squeaking like from the parking lot from somewhere. And uh, I don't know what it was. It didn't sound like a rat, but for some reason I had to go check. So I go back and I look, I lift up into the dumpster and there's a tiny gray kitten sitting in there, like so small that his eyes were barely open. They were open, but he was so small. And he's just crying and crying and crying in the dumpster. So he didn't climb in there. Someone put him in there. Um, and just cause I didn't want cats doesn't mean I'm still, I'm an animal guy. I don't like cruelty. So I, I grab him and I'm looking for the nearest shelter and I'm late for work. So I figure I'll drop him off at the shelter and I'll go to work. So I find a shelter there. It's, this is in Glendale, California. And I bring him in They're They're very nice. They're like, oh yeah. You know, he seems, he, he could probably get healthy. He doesn't seem too bad. And you know, we'll take him. I said, great. And, uh, and then heading out the door. And then I kind of stopped and I turned back and I said, Hey, by the way, what happens to him here? And I said, well, he's, you know, he's only about four weeks old. So he's too old to adopt, too young to adopt. I'm like, oh, okay. So we'll clean him up. You know, we'll give him his shots and do whatever. And then six weeks we'll put him on the floor. Okay. And then someone adopts him. They say, yeah, then people come in and they will adopt, adopt the kittens. We've got, you know, tons and tons of kittens. Oh, the wife is here. So I got to go in a second. And then, uh, I'll be down in a second. So then they say, um, then I say, so what happens if no one adopts them? They say, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, for, we have to put them down. You know, we're, we're not, we don't keep them forever. It was a kill shelter. And I was like, oh, God damn it. I said, all right, Let's keep, break out the paperwork. And that was it. Two weeks later, I went back there. They had them boxed up in like a, it was like a happy meal box, with a couple of toys and a little tag. And uh, that was my buddy Domino. They brought him home and had him about 15 years. And we drove from LA to New York, from New York to LA and back and forth and back and forth. And he, he was my boy. He would just lay up on kind of on the dash of the car uh, and catch the sun while we were driving. So we lost Pretty Girl. And then three weeks later, 
he just disappeared. And he was very old. He was getting sick. I was about to put him down, like very, very close to having him put down just because he was, he was sick. And he just never came home. And I figured that it was just him, you know, riding off into the sunset. That's the story of Buddy. All right, guys. I think that's everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Rogan. That's very nice of you. Thanks to everyone who showed up today. Um, I see more people have stopped in. Hopefully you'll catch up with the stream. If there's anything you'd like to me to talk about or see or have happen in these streams backstage, leave them in the comments. Um, I will read all these and I'm going to try to respond to them too, if I can. All right, folks. I appreciate you. I'll see you next time.